Hey folks, Irrational Loser here and welcome to the new Minecraft series. Now, this is a special Minecraft series because it is my own mod pack. Well, I say mod pack, it is just a vanilla plus mod pack with a lot, a lot, a lot of graphical changes rather than actual world changes. So you're going to see a lot of things that just make it pop a wee bit more, which I feel is needed in the actual game. One of the things that is added is the Essentials mod, which allows you to host worlds for your friends and you can play with them without having to buy a server and land sort of stuff and all that sort of stuff. So this is cool. This is all the stuff that you kind of can do with it. So you can create new worlds, come into it here and you can host it. You can add your friends' usernames like this, quite simple, and join games with them. So it's an added bonus for those that struggle to play with others and can't afford good servers then if you have a good computer you can host it for your friend and you can get playing so how to get this is quite quite simple just go onto the course forge loader type in irrational loser plus it is currently in beta i am still adding a lot of stuff and just fixing a lot of stuff for it and you can join along in this series there's a few mods there's a few resource packs that just add a wee bit extra to it the shaders if you use it, if you go into my discord I have my own shaders settings for this which doesn't force too much light and it keeps it kind of minimalist but adds the kind of shadery feel onto it which I love but to be honest not all of these can play with it so it is available if you want it, if not that's fine. But let's get into game. So to get started, if you are new to this, I suggest testing Minecraft first before you play on this mod pack. If you can run Minecraft amazingly without any of the mods, on you go. If not, this has a lot of mods that allows for better performance and being able to play it at massive FPSs. Like, I can get up to 700 playing this, but I do have a beefy computer. If you are a content creator, replay mod is in it. If you are playing a server, there is server stats available. Sadly, I was not able to get the auto crafter back port. I've got the tough blocks and the copper stuff that's coming in 121. I also have the wolves in this, so you can play with the new wolves. But the auto crafter isn't available. Don't know why some reason Curse Forge wasn't allowing me to add it. So let's get into it. Hit the single player. I suggest going survival if you're new to this game on normal difficulty as well me i've been playing for thousands of days i've been playing since 2010 i feel like i have a lot of experience playing hard but yeah that's for you so you can go hardcore if you really want to creative if you're just wanting to test everything survival is the way to go i put cheats on because uh every now and again something might break and to be able to kind of debug or fix it allows me to get in there quickly as possible. So I am creating my world, as always. I then copy and paste that and I put it into my seed. If you don't want a seed, just leave this blank. It still generates a world no matter what, it's just randomised. I always use this because this just makes it my own world. I always go large biomes because I prefer the larger biomes. It allows for more exploration of the world and allows for bigger builds to be built. But small biomes is good. If you can, I would say have fun with the amplified. But otherwise, keep it either default or large biomes. And here is where things get a bit more fun. Now, I do like building fireplaces and things like that, so one thing I do take off is the fire tick. Stops the spread of fire because obviously I'm going to use fire and fireplaces and things like that. That's just one of those things. And that should be it for everything else. You should not cheat. Oh, actually, there was one thing I did know is this one. This one I thought was part of the TNT thing, but it's not. So if a creeper explodes, it doesn't drop all the blocks. I thought that was part of the TNT thing, and I thought there was a bug, but no, it's an actual setting. So 
So if you don't want all the blocks to get destroyed from creepers getting exploded, then this is one you can turn off as well. And then we go into data packs here. You can add data packs. And the fun thing about essentials is it actually allows you to add data packs if you're wanting to add more to it. Now, a lot of the stuff that's already modded wise is the dynamic lights and things like that. It's just, it's fine. But if you want to add extras, you can. I'm currently working on another mod that adds a lot of mods that will change a lot, like things like the Dungeon and Tavern data pack, adding better dungeons, adding better um, villagers, things and stuff like that, and modded um, world gen, better end, better nether, all that sort of stuff, just for a bigger experience while playing, kind of similar to what I'm playing on Zetacraft as well. And also there's going to be some hellish things I'm doing as well, but that's that one. What I do suggest though, is when you are starting, you use a website known as Vanilla Tweaks. So Vanilla Tweaks is a mod pack where you can get a whole host of resource pack stuff that adds to the game. I do personally use this for a lot of the resource pack that I have. I will share the link down in the description of the pack that I use personally. And you can also add data packs. Now, one thing I always add is unlock all recipes. That is such an annoying thing. I do like my fast leaf decay. I do think I have a mod for it, but I always put this in just in case. I also come down to the mobs and put in the anti enderman grief. This means that enderman will not pick up any blocks, which is really, really annoying. Uh, the more mob heads as well, because obviously it's fun to have mob heads when they drop, and double shulkers. You can't have a not, you can't not have double shulkers. And that really is mostly the things you need. But if you are willing to have some fun, you can have teleporting stuff which will set homes and teleport you back and name colors and custom villager shops and stuff like that but these five are kind of the main ones i use no matter what and then you just hit download you do the other one it will bring up some adverts for you to use so that's sometimes better i'll jump into here now the fun part about this is you can literally drag and drop these data packs straight into the pack. But, annoyingly, you have to unzip the ones that change mob kind of entities. So that'll bring it up and it'll look like this. And then you just click them all in. I would suggest not putting any of these updates in because they will kind of break your game later on. Hit done. And that's it, you have your data packs in. Your world is ready to grow and you hit create new world. All right, we are in the world, it is loaded. One thing I'm going to do is actually change a game rule for do daylight to false. That will stop the world loading, well, the day from progressing. The reason I do this is because I like to pre-generate my chunks. Now, a lot of people can do that beforehand and all that sort of stuff, but there is a mod installed. You can type slash chunky and you will get a list of a load of things to do. Now, what I do like to do, and trust me, this does take a lot of resources. So we go to radius and you add in a number. I'm doing 1500. All right. Go back to the chunky mod. You're going to center on you so the center will put the coordinates from the center to on you this is your spawn point this is where you will spawn funnily enough everybody will spawn in a village love that mod and you just go to chunky and you start so chunky start and then you can type in whatever it asks you to do so chunky continue for me no, Chunky Confirm for me. And that will start it. As you can see up the top, a bar appears, the percentage and a time loaded. Fun fact is you can preload your nether as well. 
So you can type that and you can start as well. Now this will take a few minutes for each of them. Obviously you want to get everything loaded as much as possible. Now the problem is with the nether is obviously your, your coordinates are going to be a bit ski with. So I would be wary until you get in. But this will allow you to do a lot of pre-gen and it's already pre-gen for you up to the 1500 chunks in a circular radius of you. Now you can change all that, you can spiral, you can square it, all that sort of stuff. But honestly the, the basic settings are a lot better than you think. And then once that's done, you can keep running these over and over again. Just add on the number that you want to add on and it will keep working. You can leave it running overnight if you think you can for a 10,000 chunk world to get preloaded, which is one of the reasons I love this mod. It's so good, so handy, and you can just get going straight after this. So yeah, you can invite friends straight into this and you can change game modes and all that sort of stuff, cheats, all that sort of stuff that you want. Uh, share your resource packs as well if that's something you want to do. But yeah, it, this is why I like the essential stuff. You also get some amazing wardrobe stuff. I think you start off with a thousand coins, but you can add some amazing things like you can get a tiptoe emote. It's nuts. You can do all that sort of stuff. Yeah, there's not a lot to add to this. Everything's here and in it. As you can see, we have the copper grates. We'll have the copper bulbs and all that sort of stuff. And when I am able to get the auto crafter in, I will get the auto crafter in. So we are going to start.